Welcome to the Desire to Trade podcast, the podcast helping you develop forex trading skills for more freedom. I'm your host, Etienne Kreit. We are in episode 115. Let's get started right away. In most cases, what I came to realize is that people starting to trade often have a reason for starting to trade. It's not just something to start for fun and expect to make a living, but they do have this deep reason why they want to start to trade. I personally had mine when I was traveling to Asia in 2015. And although I had started to trade before, that was the time where I really took things seriously for the very first time. A few weeks ago, I was referred to a day trader from one of the listeners. And he got really serious about trading when he received a letter from his employer telling him that he was pretty much fired. Now picture this, this is pretty much the time where you figure out and you understand that having a job is kind of not a certain way to make money. You are giving your life to someone who's gonna control and tell you exactly what to do. And whenever they don't need you, you're fired. And that's it, that's pretty insane. From this point, he started to really study trading, did his best to practice every single day and put in the effort that were needed to succeed in trading. Today, you can see his result online, and he's able to reach a profit of between $1,000 and $3,000 per day on good days. Now, if that doesn't make you want to work harder, I don't know what we'll do. Andrew is really passionate about trading, and he has followed this passion until he got successful. So without further ado, please help me welcome all the way from Vancouver, Canada, the stock day trader, Andrew Aziz. Andrew Aziz, welcome to the podcast. How's it going today? I'm uh, very good. Thank you very much for having me. Very happy to have you on the podcast. And I was just on your website. I think you're going to be able to share a great story today of kind of how you've been able to get into trading and evolve. Really, really interesting, I think. The first question I like to ask my guests most of the time is what is one quote that inspires you? That's a very good question. So allow your passion to become your purpose and it will one day become your profession. That's a quote that I'm not sure exactly who said that. But it really inspiring me because, you know, for me, trading in the financial market was always a passion, but I never had the money or time or expertise to do that. But, you know, I did, you know, make it a purpose for my life to do that and eventually it became my profession. So I really got inspired by that sentence when I heard that. Nice, nice. Cool. So I want to learn a little bit what you're doing these days exactly. So tell us what kind of trading you're doing and perhaps what you look like a little bit. So I trade only U.S. stock market, and I'm trading the equities, I'm trading the real stocks. I'm not trading options. I'm not trading, you know, CFDs. I'm not trading currency market. I'm not trading futures. I'm just trading real stock, you know, Apple, Facebook. We actually buy and sell those shares. I know there's a lot of financial securities that you can buy and trade in the market, but I'm just focused on the stocks because, you know, it's just easier. You know, you don't have to learn a lot of things about options or other type of securities. Just, you know, I started with stocks and I'm just trading stocks. So I live in West Coast of Canada. So I'm in the Pacific time zone. My days start really early because market opens at 630 in my time in the morning. Right. So I have to wake up earlier. I usually, you know, I'm into a habit of doing some exercise before the market open because I need that physical activity before the market opens. So I usually wake up around 4.30. I try to get some activity done by 5.30. And I usually go for a run if the weather is good or not. You know, I try to go to the gym, do some cardio. You know, in the summer when we have the light, I usually go for a bike ride, you know, 4.30 to 5.30. And then usually by 5.30, I'm back home just taking a shower and open up the chat room, run this scanner and see what's going on in the market. What are stocks are gapping up or down? and you know, by six o'clock my time, which would be nine o'clock on the Eastern time, I'm really focused, ready to make the watch list with my traders in the chat room. Six thirty, you know, nine to nine thirty Eastern time, which would be six thirty to six to six thirty Pacific time. I'm just finalizing my watch list, finding all of the levels, the plan for the trading, look at the volume at the pre-market, and by six thirty my time, which would be nine thirty Eastern time. The market opens, I'm ready to get into trades. I usually finish trading by in the first uh, one hour, sometimes you know, 
30 minutes, sometimes an hour and a half, but usually around one hour, I finish my trading. I do a recap in the midday. So for the traders in the chat, I post the recap on, on the YouTube because it's also good for me to mm -hmm. see what I did. You know, it's a very important you know, recap and review of the trades. I do the recap in the midday. Usually in my time would be 7.30, which in the Eastern time would be 10.30 in the morning. And I post the recap on YouTube. You know, answer, I usually stay around in the chat room, answer people's question. If there is any opportunity comes in, if there is any IPO, any news or something comes up, I'll take a look at those. But I usually finish my day by eight o'clock in the morning and, you know, Pacific time, which would be around 11 morning in the Eastern time. And I stop trading. I'm in the habit of the stop trading after I make my daily goal because I know I've done that a lot. If I keep trading, I lose my morning profits. And after that, it's just I have my day for myself. I just enjoy my day, you know, eight o'clock in the morning, Pacific time. You can do a lot of things. You can go skiing. You can enjoy your time. If you have another job, you can just go and be at your job at nine o'clock in the morning. So it's the, really a privilege for me to be in the Pacific time zone. Yeah, that, that's pretty interesting. And I don't think I know that many traders trading only one hour or one hour and a half per day. I think that's pretty uh, unusual, pretty interesting. And we'll definitely jump into that a little bit more and also the review you do because I've been on your website and all that stuff. I think I'm curious about it and I want to dive into is you received near 2010 or when you moved to Vancouver, you received a termination letter from your employer. And that yeah. meant that you couldn't work for that employer anymore after having yeah. had a basically a PhD in chemical, in chemical engineering. So how was that for you and how did you move on after that? So I moved to Canada in 2009 early 2009. And I did a PhD. I finished my PhD. It was a very successful PhD, really good publications out of that. And then I started working and I was full of pride that, okay, I'm a researcher and I'm going to change the world. I'm going to work on some clean tech. I started working for a really good company, really good pay, really good future. And then after about seven months, I got laid off. And you know, they told me that, yeah, we have to cut people and it was not only me, there was, a, there was a big cutoff in the research department. And that was a big shock for me that really, I mean, am I going to spend my whole life on a corporate life that anytime they can come and see we don't need you? I'm, I'm not holding anything against that company, but I just, I just realized that, okay, maybe I have to do something for myself. Maybe I have to take care of myself if I really want to enjoy my life and if I want to build my future. Maybe I need to do something. I mean, that was the moment that I realized that work doesn't owe me anything. I have, to, I have to make it for myself. Before that, I was always a student. I was always in the bubble of uh, student lifestyle. And the real time, real life actually hit me that time. I was trading before actually I, I, you know, I, I got laid off. But after I got laid off, that was a good time. That unemployment was a good time to focus more on trading. And I started you know, more systematically, fundamentally trading. You know, I had a lot of losses in that time, but I just didn't give up. But that was quite an experience for me that, you know, and I'm happy that it happened to me early in life because there's a lot of people work, you know, 15, 20, 25 years in corporate life. And then at the end of their career, they have to leave the company with a little bit of severance package. That, I'm lucky that it happened to me very early in my career because that was the moment I realized that I, I have to do something for myself. I can't just rely on corporations to building a future. That's awesome. And did you move straight away from that job to trading? Or did you, because I guess the process to learn was not that easy. It wasn't that straightforward. No, it wasn't. And so I was unemployed for about five months because, you know, when I got laid off, I got a severance package, which was a very generous package. So I started uh, living on the package that I had, and then I started trading. I lost pretty much most of my package. And then I had to, and I was not uh, still consistent in that time. So I had to get a job. And again, I was lucky that I was in a Pacific time zone because, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you can start trading early in the morning and you can finish trading by eight o'clock in the morning and then you can have you, your job at nine o'clock. So I did have a job at nine to five and, you know, I was trading in the morning and then, you know, finish at eight o'clock. And Vancouver is a small city. We don't have a big commute. So, I, you know, usually by 830, I was ready and I'm getting to my work at nine o'clock. And I had to do that for a year, about more than a year, because I still were not consistent enough to, you know, make a living out of trading. And I think it's very, very important for people 
to keep a job somehow to pay the bills during the learning care. Yeah. I know a lot of people emailing me and say, okay, I quit my job. I have this amount of money. I want to become a trader. And that's very tough, very difficult because the pressure on you that you have to pay the bills very soon, that is a big psychological barrier to become a successful trader. If you have somehow a job that you can pay the bills so you, your life is not dependent on the income from trading, that would be very, very powerful for your future. Yeah, totally agree with that, 100% for sure. And what were the things that you had to learn when you wanted to uh, get full-time into trading? So from the moment where you started to learn, are there things that like, you had to learn that you, should, you recommend people to learn also? So one thing that I really learned and it changed my trading was I have to take this seriously. You know, I have, you, have to, you have to do it either right or you shouldn't bother trading uh -huh. because you are competing with the sharpest mind in the world. You are competing with professional traders who are equipped with the best softwares, best internets, best education, and best mentoring. So don't bother trading if you really don't want to invest in your education or in the proper platform or proper uh, tools that you need for trading. When I started trading, I was using one of these Canadian banks as a broker. It was not a direct access. So my orders sometimes would take about one minute or two minutes to get filled. It's, it was, I was just losing money and because it was a joke. You, know, you, don't, you can't day trade with a slow platform. You really need the direct access software, hotkeys. You know, your orders have to get filled immediately, less than a second. The only thing that I realized was, um, you know, I, I think it changed the direction of my trading career was I realized that this is a serious thing. This is not something that you can mess around with and see maybe it works and maybe, maybe it doesn't. If you want to take it seriously, you have to devote some energy and resources to that and you have to invest in your business and then you can take it off. And we are living in a very competitive world. Everything is competitive. In a corporate life, there is a competition. Businesses, you open a coffee shop. If there is a good market, there are 10 other coffee shops next week where they open. So it's a very competitive environment. Same as trading. Trading is also a business. It's a very competitive business. So you have to do it right or just go home. Don't bother doing that. Yeah, and I, I totally agree with that 100% also because I see people who try and they just are not like full in, like try to learn everything. Then they, they realize it doesn't work out. So yeah, I totally agree with that. And I'm curious to know, what were the reasons for you to decide to go into day trading? Because you probably know that there's many styles of trading. People have different kind of first thing that, that they start in trading. But did you just start with day trading and stick to that? Or did you try different things? The first of all, you know, the potential in day trading is uh, significantly higher than other style of trading. You know, I started, honestly, I started with swing trading because I had about twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 in my account. And, uh, you know, I, I wanted to swing trade, buying, you know, famous apples, Alibaba, buying and selling those stocks. And then I realized that, you know, if you're really a good swing trader, at the end of the year, if you can make 20% on your account, you know, you've done great. You beat the market. If you are a fund manager in Wall Street and you can give a return of 15 to 20%, you're a rocket star. So how much would be, you know, $20,000 in my account, 20% would be, I don't know, $4,000. It's really not that big amount of money. And I was expecting more than that. Day traders, on the other hand, they try to make half a percent to one percent on their accounts daily. So there is a significantly more potential in day trading. And I realized that, okay, I need to make money a couple of hundred dollars a day. I can't do that with swing trading. I need to go to day trading. And as I mentioned, you know, the best swing traders, they can make 20 percent a year on their account. Day traders, sometimes they can make you know, 1% to 2% on their account daily. And I didn't have a big account. So swing trading, if you really want to make a living out of swing trading, you really need a big account. But for day trading, you know, you can do well with a smaller account size. You can actually, it's actually much easier to do day trading with a smaller account than with a larger account. So that's why I decided to go with day trading because of the potential. But at the same time, very soon I realized that, yes, there is a potential of adding 1% to your account, but there is also a potential of losing 10% of your account in one mm -hmm. single day. So everything that has some potential comes with some risks. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, totally agree with that also. And so how was the learning curve 
for you to learn how to day trade. Because I know people who are starting right now, they try different things. Maybe they have a strategy, they go to something else, they go back, they look around. So how is the learning process for you? And what would you recommend people to do like step-by-step step if they want to be able to day trade? So for me, I started with real accounts and I lost a lot of money. Yeah. And then I realized that, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. I have to make sure first I know what I'm doing before actually I lose more money because I couldn't afford more money. And then I started simulator account. I purchased a simulator account and I started trading on a simulator account for a few months. I think it was three or four months on a simulator. And now I realized that, okay, this is a different world. And then after the simulator account, I went live. Again, I lost money on the live account. And then that's, that was the moment that I realized that, okay, emotion and psychology is also really, really important. And then I switched back to the simulator for a couple of more months, and then I started to take it more seriously. You know, the money on the simulator and paper account, like my real account, and try to get into the, you know, the psychology of the trading. And eventually, I turned out to live account and slowly increased my share size. So I started a small and slowly increased my share size. But what I recommend to people is never, ever start trading with real accounts, with real money. Because it's easy, because people can open an account in the same day online, they think they should do it. But no, because it's easy, you shouldn't do it. You have to sign up with a simulator account, trade for a couple of months, and see if this is for you or not, if you can make the connection to that career or profession or not. If you could, if you think you can become consistent after a couple of months, you can move to a real account, but trade very small size, very, very small size. You know, just enough to make, you know, $5, $10 per trade, just to cover your commission cost, because just, you know, just to get a feeling of that. And if you think you're consistent, you can slowly increase your share size. So my recommendation, even for my traders are, first, start with the three months of simulation. If you think you're comfortable after three months, go live, but a small size, but always have one simulator account next to you. Whenever you are under pressure, whenever you're having some bad losses, just go back to the simulator. And if you think you're consistent on a live account, every two weeks, increase your share size and see how it is. And this is exactly like professional traders. Professional traders, they also have a simulator account. If they have a series of bad losses or if they you know, hit their max loss, they don't go home. You know, If you come in the morning at 9 o'clock and at 10 o'clock you hit a max loss, if you're working for a New York prop firm, you, co- you don't go home. You don't, you don't say, goodbye, everyone, I go home. No, they have to sit down and they have to trade on a simulator. Their mm-hmm. managers would ask them to stay in the simulator. So in a short answer, start with a simulator and then go live a small size and then increase your share size slowly. Yeah, cool. And people wonder sometimes about strategies as well. You probably know it's a big topic in the trading industry. Could you guide us through one of your trades that you took recently, like just so people get to know the thought process and what you're looking for a little bit? So I'm looking for patterns. So first of all, let me tell you something about the strategy. People always looking for the best strategy on the internet. You know, yeah, they're always looking for the best strategy. What is the best strategy? There is none such a thing. There is no best strategy. There are millions of traders and there are millions of ways of that the traders are trading and all of them are correct. There is no best strategy. You have to see what is work best for you. It's like like buying a car. You know, what is the best automobile in the world? There is none. You know, there's always, there are good cars. You have to see what is best for you in that condition. If you have a family, big family, you want to buy a van because you need a space. If you are single, if you're young, if you have money, you want to buy a sport car. Just have some fun with that. You just have to see what works best for you. Same as a strategy. I'm trading based on the chart patterns, and I'm using some important indicators. I mean, I'm using volume weighted average price, VWAP, Mm -hmm. that shows the strength of the stock during the day. And also, I'm looking for some chart patterns, for example, like a bull flag, when the stock is moving up and then does a consolidation and it wants to break up or break down to the high of the day or to the low of the day. So these are the typical trades that I make. For example, this morning, I did one trade. I don't remember exactly what was the ticker. I think it was SKKN, I think. So the stock moved up for five minutes. And then for five, you know, after in, for 10 minutes, it did a really nice consolidation. The stock was trying to go up, but couldn't. But at the same time, the sellers were not as strong enough to push the price lower. And then after about 10 minutes, the buyers jump in and push the price higher. I wrote the momentum to the upside. 
So I'm looking for patterns. And as a trader, I'm always constantly analyzing the power between buyers and sellers. So my job is to always looking at the balance of the power between buyers and sellers and betting on the winning group. The strategies that I'm using in the book, I introduced nine strategies in the book that I wrote, but essentially most of the times I'm trading two or three of them. First of all is the you know, bull flag or ABCD pattern, VWAP trading based on the VWAP, either short or long side near the VWAP. And I do sometimes trade based on the support or resistance on the daily chart. Cool. And we'll put the link in the show notes for your book. I think people should check it out. It's called uh, How to Day Trade for a Living. Really insightful, I think. So I started to, read it. I started to read it for my pleasure and I really like it. So it's good. Now, I think there's one thing that, because you've probably, you've, you've probably seen day traders before that trade the whole day. They go in, they clock in at 9 o'clock or 9.30, let's say Eastern time, and they finish at 6 p.m. So it's one thing to day trade, but it's another thing to day trade for an hour or two hours. So how do you manage to keep this short and not trade all day and be stuck at your computer all day? That's a good question. I think I usually by the, you know, for me in the first hour, I either hit my max loss because if I, you know, if I have a really bad loss right at the open, then I know myself psychologically, I become a mess mm -hmm. and then I want to, you know, do a revenge trading. I have to stop. Sometimes when I make a bad loss, I'll just leave for five, 10 minutes. People in the chat, they can see me. I'll, I'll go away. I'll, sometimes I go out for a bike ride or for a quick run or something like that and then come back. You know, because the revenge trading is the worst thing that can happen to you. You want to desperately make the money back. For me, I usually, you know, target between $500 to $1,000 per day. And if I hit that $1,000 per day in the first hour, I wouldn't really bother staying, you know, until the close. I'm not saying there is no opportunity. Of course, there is a lot of opportunities trading midday or at near the close. But, you know, you just have to see how much money you want, how much money is really enough. For me, one of the things that I like about day trading is the freedom and flexibility. If I can make $1,000 a day just in the first hour, I don't want to go and enjoy my life because I have only one life and I want to enjoy that. So why would I sit until 4 or 5, 6 p.m. in the afternoon and I just keep trading for more money? It's, you know, I really don't think that's necessary for me. But that's a personal opinion and that's the mm -hmm. personal preference. I know there's a lot of people who want to trade in the midday or in the afternoon and, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But for me, I think uh, I'm, I'm happy with what I make. And I think most of the volatility and most of the good volume is happening in the open. So I'm just happy with the style that I'm having. Again, this is my style of trading. I'm always telling people that, you know, what I do is not necessarily the best. It's just my style of trading. Yeah, totally good. And you're also doing those reviews pretty much every day of what happened today and your results for that day. Those are really interesting, I think, for people to look at. But do you use them yourself or is, is it a way for you to review or is it a way just to share what's going on in your trading? I'm guessing if you go back on them and review them later <clears throat> on. I do. Sometimes I do. Especially, you know, I have classes every two weeks and I update my material, course material all the time. And for having the course mat updated course material, I'll go and watch the videos and I take the screenshot from the videos and sometimes... I you know, keep track of what I did and I add more material to my courses for new traders. So it's good in a couple of the ways. So first, I just review what I did. So in my mind, I'm all, if you watch my videos, I'm always telling myself that what I did wrong and what I did nice, uh, what I did right. So it's always a way to critique myself as well. And I'm, I'm, I'm not embarrassed to tell that in the videos. You always see me in the videos. I'm just criticizing myself. Or why did I do that? Why did I, you know? cover early or, or this kind of things. And then I know there is some useful information for other people. So other people can watch them and they can learn something from that. So that's the second reason I'll do that for the people. And the third reason is actually a good, you know, you know, library of all of my work and I can go back to them and I can, you know, take more material for my next book or for my courses from that. Yeah, cool, cool. And I think just the fact of reviewing those is it's super useful. Like it's a way for you to see what your best setup are like, and you can probably get kind of target what you take more in the future and the trades you you take in the future, basically. So love it. Yeah, exactly. Reviewing what you've done it's extremely important. I used to do it in writing. If you go to my old website, I used to do it in writing and taking picture and putting it in a blog post. 
but it just takes too too much time and I'm a little bit busier these days so I just try to do it with video and having a archive of uh, you know video libraries mm -hmm. cool so we'll make sure to link that as well in the show note and are there any other habits Andrew you have every single day that you think are essential for traders anything you do maybe other traders don't do or don't think about doing I think physical condition is ex extremely important for day traders, for traders. Uh, you know, you have to be in good physical condition. If I want to compare trading to other professions, I think the closest that I can think of is professional athletes. Uh, because your performance is measured daily. You know, no matter how good of a swimmer you are, if you are, for example, an Olympic swimmer, no matter how good you are in, in the, during the you know, preparation and practice, you have to be perfect in the competition day. You have to be in the Olympic day. In that day, you have to perform well. Otherwise, nothing matters. It, no other profession is like that. If you are an engineer, if you don't feel good, you just don't go to work. But you still get paid and your career won't, affect, you know, it won't get affected. And a lot of professions are like that. If you're a lawyer, if you don't film for one week or two weeks or one month, it still is okay. But the day trader, doesn't matter how good you are, you have to be in excellent physical and emotional condition that same day. So people usually ignore that fact that you have to have a good sleep last night. You shouldn't over-caffeinate yourself. You should be in a good physical condition, you know, like you have done exercise, you're feeling well, because the decisions that you're making are a matter of seconds. And there has been a lot of studies that, you know, good physical condition is actually affecting the cognitive decisions. So there is an extremely, you know, a powerful correlation between the physical condition and the decisions that you're making on day trading. I think most of the people will ignore that. I know a lot of people don't sleep or they drunk or they didn't party last night so, and they want to come and uh, trade the next day. I've done these kind of things, and I know when I'm not in the best physical condition, I'm usually making decisions that when I go back in time, so why, why did I do that? Why did I get into that trade? So I think traders should know that they are in a profession that their performance is measured daily. It's exactly like professional athletes. No matter how good you are, no matter how what kind of experience and education you have, if you don't trade that stock well, you won't get anywhere. Exactly like professional athletes. You know, if you are the best player in the world, in the history, if you don't perform well in the competition day, nothing really matters. Yeah, totally agree with that one. And I've seen personally for myself a really big impact of sleep on how you trade, pretty much. That, that's, that's pretty crazy. But I see traders sometimes who don't take time to, to sleep enough. And I'm, I'm curious because you wake up really early. So how do you manage to get enough sleep? Do you I, think you get enough sleep? No, I, yeah, I, I try to go to bed early. I usually go between eight to nine o'clock and okay. to bed. So I try to get at least seven hours of sleep. It's a little bit more difficult in the summer because, you know, in yeah. the summer in Vancouver, until 10 o'clock, 1030, uh, everything is bright and sun is out. But during the winter now, we are getting, uh, you know, the sunset is at around six. You know, it, it's actually good to go to bed early. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how do you react if, let's say, one day you don't feel like you're good enough to trade? Like, let's say you didn't sleep enough or you had this, like, one event that kind of shakes you. Do you still trade or do you have some tricks uh, to get back in the right mindset? Um, I don't have any tricks, really. I don't think there is any trick uh, to get back into a good mindset. If I really feel bad, I either reduce my share size significantly. So if I take, for example, a thousand share for a stock that is twenty dollars, I might just trade two hundred shares or one hundred fifty shares or you know four hundred shares. So I reduce my share size. If I feel really really bad, I trade on a simulator instead of a real account just to get you know just a practice, just trade on a simulator. And if I feel really really bad, I just skip the day. I'll just. Uh, uh, sleep more and get to, you know, try to be in a better physical shape. And then maybe I try to see what's in the midday or getting into the close. But I don't force myself to trade every day. My recommendation to traders who don't feel well is either reduce your share size or just trade in a simulator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good point because you, you still get the practice of trading, but you don't get the loss of like your, your bad reaction or whatever you're not comfortable with at that time. So I think it's a good advice. 
absolutely. And you know, every trader must have a simulator on the side. You know, people think simulators are for new traders, but no, every trader, no matter what experience you have, you must have a simulator account ready. Every time that you think it's necessary, you should switch to a simulator. Well said, well said. Even if it's just for practice, and this is something I don't really do because I swing trade, but I think it could be useful even for someone who just want to try something different or whatever, just for fun. <laughs> Ultimately, having a simulator exactly. on the side. I agree, yeah. I want to ask you a question from one of my listeners, and this is uh, Michel, who asked, what is the best time frame for day trading? Do you have any thoughts on that? Depends on the strategy that you want to trade. Most of the volatility in the market is in the first two hours. So, you know, between 9.30 to 11.30 Eastern time, that's where we have most of the volume and most of the volatility. But we can get a really nice trend trades in the midday as well. You know, again, depends on the type of trader that you are. If you are really a trader that uh, you trade momentums and, you, you know, your trades takes usually seconds to a couple of minutes, then probably in the morning session, you will have more opportunities. But if you are a trader that you have swing mentality during the day, so you want to have your trades a couple of hours to work, then probably midday would be better for you because you need the volatility to come down a little bit, the volume is coming down, and some patterns start showing themselves during the midday. For me personally, open is there are more opportunities because I'm more like a momentum trader. Mm -hmm. And are you taking your trades always on the same time frame? So like the five minute chart, the two minute chart, or does that vary? My main chart is a five minute chart. Uh, so I look at the five minute chart all the time. I do have a one minute chart, but I don't give a lot of focus and attention on the one minute chart because the type of trade that I'm making, you know, five minute patterns are more powerful and more stronger than one minute chart. One minute chart can be a lot of noise in there because there's a lot of, you know, the higher the time frame is usually, you know, the more powerful the patterns and balance of the power between buyers and sellers can be obvious. Cool. Is there any additional kind of wisdom or pieces of advice that we didn't cover you would like to share with people, things that they would have to know? I think day traders, you know, every type of trader, you should remember that your job, you know, you are a social psychologist behind a computer and a trading platform. So your job is always to balance the power between buyers and sellers. And you always have to bet on the winning group. You always have to be with the winning group. And there's a lot of times that you can't see the balance between the buyers and sellers. And those are the times that you have to step away and you just have to watch. Mm -hmm. uh, over trading is probably the number one reason that new traders would fail. And because they think they have to be on every move. You know, not necessarily you should be on every move. There's a lot of moves during the day that you shouldn't be in there because you are looking for moves that are predictable and catchable. There are a lot of moves that you have no idea why they start to move like that. And that's okay. You don't have any of those. You, your job is just to look for those small handful number of the patterns that are actually predictable. I love that. And it's actually trading what you're comfortable with, what you understand, not like what you try to figure out. So I like that. Exactly. That's, that's, that's the, exactly the difference between gamblers and traders. Gamblers, they trade... They gamble when the odds are not in their favor. But traders, they, they wait until the odds are in their favor. So that's why that's exactly the difference between traders and gamblers. You know, in casino, for example, if you all of the games, the odds are against you. You might win, but the odds are against you. You know, even in the roulette, when you bet on the color, green or, um, uh, sorry, black or red, the odds are 49% because you have two green there. So the casino at the end is winner. No matter what you do, the odds are against you. But traders, the odds are against them, but they can wait until they see an opportunity that the odds are in their favor. And that's when you should trade. If you go to a casino and start counting cards to get the odds in your favor, they kick you out. They try to find you the, the professional gamblers that they count cards. They get kicked out of casinos because they're trying to find patterns that the odds are in their favor. And the casino doesn't want that. So you always have to wait until you, you know that the odds in your favor to make the trade. You can still lose money on trades. I lose money all the time, but because I'm trading certain strategies that it's been proven to, over time, they show themselves more and more 
uh, profitable than you know losers, I'll make money at the end of the month or year or quarter. I love that. I think that's perfect analogy here. So love it. Awesome. So Andrew, how can people find you if they want to connect with you or reach out after the podcast? I think the best way to get into me, just to visit the website, you know, bearbulltraders.com. If you want to see our, uh, you know, if you want to see my courses, you can go into the website, you can download the presentation and classes for free. I put all of the material for free and they can, people can download and take a look at the presentations. Because I believe the information must be free. You know, if you go to all of the, you know, universities, you know, MIT, Stanford, Harvard, all of the course material is open source. You know, you can go download all of the course material in all of those schools. So you can go to my website, you can download the classes, take a look at the presentations. If you want to talk to me, you can email me, andrew at bearabletraders.com. I'm trying to get to you as fast as possible. I usually try to answer emails every day. And if you want to join our chat room, you're welcome to you know, give it a try. If you have a trial on our chat room for seven days, you can come and see my screen, see myself, and you know, talk to the community and be part of our community. Awesome. And as always, make sure to put all the link over at disastertrade.com so people can find everything we talk about here. And Andrew, what kind of goal do you have for the future? That's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, um, you know, in terms of professional goals, I would like to explore a little bit the other financial markets. I know cryptocurrency is um, you know, getting more, more momentum. I'd like mm-hmm. to start trying to play with cryptocurrency markets. And you know, I've never traded options. Maybe I look into that. I want to. I'm, I'm actually in the process of developing a course for swing trading as well. So I just spend a little bit more time on developing materials for swing trading and uh, grow the community that we have and help the new traders to you know, get into day trading and see if day trading is for them or not. In terms of personal goals, um, you know, I'm a climber. I'm a mountain climber. I, I try to go to Nepal next year again for climbing a couple of mountains there in you know, over 20,000 feet or something like that. I was in Nepal in 2015, so I was climbing in Nepal in 2015. I want to go back in Nepal. So I have some personal goals to climb mountains all across the world. Nice. And what's your main motivation for those professional and personal goals? I don't know. I think, I don't know. I, it's a good question, really. I don't know. I, have, I think I have one life and I think I should live it to its fullest. I mean, if I can climb the mountains, if it's my passion climbing the mountains, since I have time, I have money, I'm fortunate enough, I'm healthy, you know, I should be able to do that. I mean, there's no reason for me not to use my time and energy and the fortunate, you know, time that I have to do that. And for in terms of professional, is my passion. You know, I just I love trading. You know, I love you know financial market and how it works. The concept of the whole financial system, which just uh, you know ties everything together. The whole life in our civilization based on this financial system is just interests me. The concept of money is really interesting for me. Not the money that they can buy stuff for that per se. It's just the concept of financial market is very interesting for me. And I just want to learn more and more. Learning, the day that you stop learning, I think that's a very sad day. I mean, you always have to continuously grow and learn new stuff. Totally agree. Yeah, for sure. And Andrew, we have a last question we ask all the guests. So if you could give only one piece of advice for traders in one sentence, what would that one sentence of advice be? Follow your passion. That would be, you know, advice in life. Follow your passion, whatever your passion is, just follow that. And, uh, you know, that passion eventually would become your profession one day. That's the same quote that I said at the beginning of our interview. I think it's very important to follow your passion. Every morning when I wake up at 4 o'clock, 4.30, it doesn't bother me because I'm just (laughs) excited to get into trading. It's my passion. But if someone wants to wake me up every morning for a job that I don't like, it's just, it's a miserable lifestyle. I don't want that. So my only advice is follow your passion. If trading is your passion, follow that. If you, you know, think trading is not your passion, that's fine. There's a lot of other opportunities and challenges. You can go and follow your passion uh, in other areas. I think uh, I tell that to the new traders all the time that, there is nothing wrong with failing in trading. That's okay. You come and see this is not for you. And the next challenge and next career that you choose, that might be your passion and you become successful on that. There is absolutely nothing wrong with trying new challenges. The real shame is for the people who never try 
their passions. I think that's uh, very honorable to try new things and fail. It's uh, shameful if trading is your passion and you don't even try it. Powerful, powerful. Andrew Aziz, thanks so much for being on the podcast. It's been a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you very much and have a good day. So that was it, guys, for my interview with Andrew Aziz. I really hope you liked it. Probably one of my favorite stories ever on the podcast. And I would love to get your thoughts. Also, a big thank you for you guys who suggested questions to ask the guest. That was in the Facebook group over at thisartitude.com forward slash group. If you have any question you want me to ask the guest, make sure to let me know. And I'll try to pick two or three per episode. Make sure you join the Facebook group over at thisartitude.com forward slash group. And I'll see you guys next week for the next episode of the Disartitude podcast. Ciao.